So we were just talking about your money, but that isn't stopping people from spending it to get Democrats out of office. Those higher prices now fueling some Republican campaigns. We're seeing record numbers. In fact, Republicans have now raised $105 million for House campaigns. Also, on the Senate side, uh, former Missouri Governor Eric Greitens now up double digits in that state's GOP Senate primary. But interesting enough, it's aided by his opposition to Mitch McConnell, according to a new internal campaign poll, which uh, I mentioned this yesterday during our panel. Here's what one of our guests, a Democratic strategist, had to say. Take a listen. He doesn't have to worry about that. I don't think anybody's going to touch him. Mitch McConnell is a master politician. Master politician. And that's where I want to welcome back in our panel. Joining us once again, we have Democrat Robert Patillo and Republican Melissa Armo. Master politician. Uh, that coming from a Democrat. Uh, so I want to get your thoughts on this, Melissa. I see you kind of smirking there. Uh, Eric Greitens, according to that poll, he's up because he's wanting to get Mitch McConnell out. You heard Ken say, though, no, he's a master politician. He thinks he's safe. What do you think? I agree with Ken. Ken's right. Mitch McConnell is a master politician. He's been there for forever. My God, some of these people, I think that really Congress should have term limits. When you say these people in there making uh, lifelong careers, you kind of wonder really where they have the best interest. Really, it's his best interest in his constituency or is his best interest is continuing his job and his position there in Washington. I've got to hand it to the guy that's running against him. I never heard of him before until I researched it to talk about this today. I really didn't know anything about this gentleman. I mean, good for him for trying to go out there and see what happens. It'll see if really Mitch McConnell is going to lay it all on the line and really how much people want him to stay in office. What do you think, Robert? Well, I think it's going to come down to uh, how deeply former President Trump is going to become involved in me in these races. He's been critical of Mitch McConnell and many of the other establishment uh, Republicans. But is he going to go there and actively campaign against Mitch McConnell? Is he going to go go to some of these Republican primary races that ensure that he has a, a MAGA Trump supporter? Or that he, or is he going to keep his hands out of it and wait until the general election? Here in Georgia, we have um, Herschel Walker running as the MAGA candidate. We have Kelvin King running as more of the establishment Republican candidate. How much will President Trump be involved in races along those lines? Now, Democrats, we love to see the Republican Civil War. By all means, fight it out, spend the money, bloody each other up, and we'll be waiting for you in the general election. Well, I want to and say I one think... thing. Krisha Walker is going to win. I mean, he not, not only is he going to win the GOP nomination, he is going to win. I think he's fantastic. He speaks to regular, everyday people. Forget about the fact that he's friends with Donald Trump. He's going to win. I would be shocked if he doesn't just win the whole shebang, actually. Yeah, I, Should we place another my, bet? I'm putting, my money on, I'm putting my money on Warnock probably by 10 points. So I, I'll look wow. forward to it. I, I will bet on that right now. Ooh, okay. There you have it. I love it. Everybody mark this down, 1227. The bet was placed. All right, we'll see what happens. All right, meanwhile, things are heating up in Virginia. Both candidates there uh, for governor launching pretty brutal ad campaigns at one another. Uh, take a look. We had 8,000 cases yesterday in Virginia. We had 8,000 cases yesterday. Just this week, 8,000 cases on Monday in Virginia. We in Virginia today, 1,142 children are in ICU beds. You can't be governor saying things like that. That is disqualifying. Mr. Young, first to you. Do you support a right to an abortion being included in Virginia's constitution? No, I do not. With Donald Trump's Supreme Court likely to overturn Roe versus Wade and leave states to decide if abortion is legal, Glenn Youngkin's made clear where he stands. Youngkin says he wants to ban abortion and defund Planned Parenthood. Don't let Glenn Youngkin bring his far-right agenda to Virginia. I'm Terry McAuliffe, candidate for governor, and I sponsored this ad. On top of that, now you have the DNC uh, mentioning that it's rolling out a new ad campaign targeting minority voters in that state. And Democratic strategist Ken Altshuler yesterday on the show 
said that he believes that Virginia's race for governor is a must win for Democrats. Robert, do you agree with that? Uh I, yes, I agree with it, and I think it's, it's definitely a bad sign that they have to work this hard in order to win Virginia. Uh, Virginia has been trending blue of, of basically for the last 20 years. Uh, you have so many people from the D.C. suburbs who have moved out into northern Virginia, into Arlington, into uh, various other areas. So this is not to be this close of a race. I think it was a mistake um, to have Terry McAuliffe as the um, Democratic nominee again. He is a blast from the past. He's a voice from the Clinton administration. Uh, he does not reflect the new progressive voices of Democrats that, uh, that people are looking for. And I think trying to run um, run the Republicans as being a Trump clone, I think that's a song that people have heard already. And uh, quite frankly, people are ready for a different change, new candidates, new faces. I still think McAuliffe will pull it out, but I think it's a message to Democrats to stop going with the establishment candidates and go with what the people actually want. Notice, though, he didn't place a bet. Just saying, Melissa. Uh, <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? Well, I don't really know what's going to happen with this one, but I do I do think this. I think it's an important race for both sides. So let's say, for example, that uh, the Democratic candidate loses. I think that's good news for the GOP going into 2022. And let's say if the opposite thing happens, then I think that he barely, barely pulls it out. So I think this is going to be a tight, tight race, and people are going to be watching this all across the nation That's as a sign of the possibility of things to come in 2022. Remember, we were talking earlier about inflation. All of these things are in people's mind right now. Whether or not that sticks in people's minds a year from now, the next race, I don't know, but right now they are in people's minds. And people are, Biden is having an unfavorable poll numbers. And that hurts anybody that's yeah. coming to the Democratic Party right and, now. And, and sure, and that is... Go ahead. I, I, I'll just say just the last thing. I just want people to remember that if it was not for the unfair political hit job against Justin Fairfax, who would have been in line to be the nominee this time, which was launched from inside the Democratic Party itself, and those um, allegations never went anywhere, the Democrats would not be even be running a close race. He would have won. The, he would have won this without much competition. But because the establishment of the party does not want those young voices, those minority voices, sometimes bubbling to the top, sometimes they cannibalize themselves, and that's they end up with Terry McAuliffe again. All right. Uh, we talked about Republicans uh, breaking a record, at least House Republicans now, for its campaign efforts. But Democrats are now talking about possibly pulling money away from at least some of these races, saying that, you know, we can't treat all these races the same. So this is according to an article that I saw on The Hill, writing that Democrats fret as long shot candidates pull money attention uh, away from other challengers. Um, and in particular, they mentioned Georgia in there as well. Uh, so, of course, I wanted to get your thoughts on that, Robert Patillo. Um, and also, I want to mention, before I do so, that Republicans in the Iowa House, this is a big deal, just won a special election held this week, taking a seat. This hasn't happened in 46 years. Iowa's a big win for Republicans, wouldn't you say? So I want to get your reaction real quickly, 40 seconds to you, Robert, on this, and then I'll go to you, Melissa. Well, I think this is part and parcel of why Democrats have to double down their efforts to pass the president's agenda. If you do not pass Build Back Better, then what the hell are Democrats running on in 2022? Are you going to run on like, hey, Afghanistan? Hey, we're running on uh, COVID. You, you, you have to actually have some points on the board. And this idea from the uh, the establishment Democrats that they get to pick winners or losers is not the case anymore. That's not the way elections still work. I think they're learning it the hard way. What do you think, Melissa? I think when you have Congress in a Democratic control, when you have the president as a Democrat, and things aren't going well in the country, again, it bodes badly for anyone that's running on the Democratic ticket. So I'm not surprised that they're like, wait a minute, maybe we need to move money around so that we make sure that we sustain some of these other things. Why they're trying to go against candidates that they really have very little chance of running uh, of winning against makes no sense to me. They have to spread the money out where they can really make a difference in it. I mean, that's at least what I would offer up as advice if I was a campaign manager to any of these people. All right, Melissa, Robert, we are out of time. Thank you so much for your time as always. Good to see you. Enjoy the Thanks. rest of your week. As we mentioned, it is Friday Eve. Hopefully that brings a smile to some of your faces. So to come on this edition of News On, we're gonna get an update on your forecast. Uh, major changes in store. It may start to feel a little bit more like fall. Details next. <laughs>